Hello, welcome back. Today I'm back in the Mount Olivet Cemetery in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. We're going to be visiting the original grave of Julia Greeley. She is currently being considered for sainthood and is the only person in the history of Denver whose body lays in state in a Catholic church. So I'm going to be telling you about her story as we go visit her original grave and then we'll also go to the church where her current tomb is. Julia Greeley was an African-American philanthropist and Catholic convert. An enslaved woman, later freed by the U.S. government, she is known as Denver's Angel of Charity because of her aid to countless families in poverty. She is currently on her way to sainthood. Julia was born into slavery in Hannibal, Missouri, sometime between 1833 and 1848. At the age of five, a cruel slave master, in the course of beating her mother, caught Julia's right eye with his whip and destroyed it. This disfigurement remained with Julia the rest of her life. She became referred to as One-Eyed Julia. Freed by Missouri's Emancipation Act in 1865, Julia earned her keep by serving white families in Missouri, Colorado, Wyoming, and New Mexico, though mostly in the Denver area. She moved to Denver in 1879 and became a cook and nanny to Julia Pratt Dickerson of St. Louis, a widow who would later on marry William Gilpin, who had been appointed by President Abraham Lincoln as the first territorial governor of Colorado. Julia was baptized into the Catholic Church on June 26, 1880 at Secret Heart Church in Denver and became especially devoted to the most sacred heart of Jesus, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and receiving Holy Communion daily. Despite secretly suffering from painful arthritis, she tirelessly walked the city streets, distributing literature from the Sacred Heart League to Catholics and non-Catholics alike, including firemen at every fire station in Denver. In 1901, she joined the Secular Franciscans and remained an active member for the rest of her life. Julia spent the majority of her time helping others and completing church duties. When the Gilpins died, Julia began to do labor work for a number of wealthy white families. With this money she made, she decided to give it all away to people who needed it. She pulled a little red wagon through the streets of Denver in the dark to bring food, coal, clothing, and groceries to needy families. She made her rounds after dark so as to not embarrass white families ashamed to accept charity from a poor black woman. Whatever she did not need for herself, Julia spent assisting poor families in her neighborhood. When her own resources were inadequate, she begged for food and clothing for the needy. One of her major acts of kindness was when she donated her own burial plot for an African-American man who died. He was going to be laid into a pauper's grave, but Julia refused to let it happen. After this, many people began to call her the colored angel of charity because of her kindness. Because of all her dedication to families in poverty, she was officially named Denver's angel of charity. Mostly what she did was done secretly. People didn't know the extent of her efforts until after she died. The only recorded photo of Julia is with the white angel. While Julia was helping the Eucart family by mopping their floor, she noticed the family was Catholic and asked where their children were. She was told by Agnes, the wife, that they had had a child, but that child had died. Julia made a promise that they would have another child, and they did. 
and Julia had called her the White Angel. Julia died on June 7, 1918, after attending Mass. As she lived in a boarding house, Julia's body was laid out in church, and immediately many hundreds of people began filling past her coffin to pay their grateful respect. She was originally buried here at Mount Olivet Cemetery. In 2016, the Archdiocese of Denver opened her cause for canonization, enabling her to be called Servant of God. In 2017, her remains were transferred from Mount Olivet Cemetery here to the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, making her the first person to be interred there since it opened in 1912. Julia's bones were placed in a funerary box made of exotic red wood, which then became, became entombed in white marble near the altar. She has the distinction of being the only simple Catholic in the history of Denver whose body lay in state in a Catholic church. And Julia is one of six African Americans and three former slaves under review for sainthood. So we're coming up to her original grave here. And the cemetery doesn't mark it because there's she still gets lots of visitors, even though her body isn't here yet. But this was her original resting place. And I believe this headstone is newer, so I'll put a picture of what the original one looked like. But they still put this new one here for her. It says beloved Julia Greeley former slave, Angel of Mercy, Sacred Heart League promoter, secular Franciscan, servant of God. And then it says her body rested here, 1918 through 2017, and now awaits the resurrection in the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. And then they put her only picture here with the white angel baby. So yeah, very cool. This was uh, the spot she was originally buried in. So now we will head over to the Catholic Church in Denver to see her tomb and where her body now lays. So I'll see you guys over there. All right, we were at the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception down here in downtown Denver. And I'm gonna go inside and show you Julia's tomb. Now, normally they don't allow filming, so I got permission from the Reverend to do so. So I'm super excited to go inside and show you guys. Hope you enjoyed that video and getting to see both graves of Julia Greeley. Please like and subscribe for some more videos and I'll see you at the next grave.
Thanks.